An aero-engined car is an automobile powered by an engine designed for aircraft use. Most such cars have been built for racing, and many have attempted to set world land speed records. While the practice of fitting cars with aircraft engines predates World War I by a few years, it was most popular in the interwar period between the World Wars when military surplus aircraft engines were readily available and used to power numerous high-performance racing cars. Initially powered by piston aircraft engines, a number of post-World War II aero-engined cars have been powered by aviation turbine and jet engines instead. Piston-engined, turbine-engined, and jet-engined cars have all set world land speed records. There have also been some non-racing automotive applications for aircraft engines, including production vehicles such as the Tucker 48 and prototypes such as the Chrysler turbine car, Fiat Turbina, and General Motors Firebirds. In the late 20th century and into the 21st century, there has also been a revival of interest in piston-powered aero-engined racing cars. Topic. Background In the early 20th century, automotive engines were fairly limited in terms of revolutions per minute RPM, with 3,000 revolutions per minute constituting an upper limit. This meant that the easiest way to increase the power output of an engine was to increase its displacement. In the decade of the 1900s, engine construction necessitated extremely large displacements in order to simply reach the 100 horsepower 75 kilowatts mark. Furthermore, while it was difficult to fit such a large engine into a car, it was very much possible, and the fact that most of the aircraft engines of the period were liquid-cooled made them more adaptable for automotive use. <laughs> <laughs> Racing <laughs> Pre-World War I A number of early European automobile manufacturers experimented with the automotive use of aircraft engines, including Hispano Suiza, Renault, and Rolls-Royce, although it was Fiat that made perhaps the first true aero-engined car when it created the Tipo S76 in 1910. Nicknamed, the Beast of Turin. The vehicle consisted of a 1907-08 Fiat production chassis mated to a four-cylinder Tipo S760 A airship engine that had a displacement of 28.4 liters (1730 cu in) and developed 300 horsepower (220 kilowatts) at 1500 revolutions per minute. Darrell Murphy speculates that the car was built to capture the world land speed record, which at the time stood at 125.95 mph after the Blitz and Benz had established the mark at the English track Brooklands in 1909. While the Tipo S76 did race at Brooklands, it never exceeded more than about 90 mph it later returned to continental Europe and ultimately disappeared during World War I. Sunbeam also manufactured aircraft engines before World War I, and at the suggestion of chief designer Louis Cotalin, it decided to install one of its 9 litre 550 cu in flathead V12 engines, which would later be developed into the Sunbeam Mohawk, into an automobile chassis in 1913. Nicknamed Toodles. The car achieved 114.49 miles per hour, 184.25 kilometers per hour at Brooklands before it was shipped to the United States, where it was raced by Ralph De Palma. De Palma later sold Toodles to the Packard Motor Car Company, which used the car's engine as the inspiration for its 7 liter, 430 cu in twin six, which became the world's first production 12 cylinder engine in 1916, as well as a 250 horsepower, 190 kilowatts, 14.8 liter, 900 cu in V12 aircraft engine in 1917. Sunbeam also developed a second aero engined car before World War I, which began life as an Indianapolis 500 racing car before Warwick Wright augmented it with a V8 Sunbeam Sadar airship engine. The car developed 200 brake horsepower 150 kilowatts at 2,200 revolutions per minute, which enabled it to achieve a top speed of approximately 100 miles per hour 160 kilometers per hour. By 1923, this Sunbeam was listed for sale for £1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Interwar period Topic: 1920s. By the 1920s, after the end of World War I, interest in and development of aero-engined cars reached a new level. 
Cotalan built another aero-engined racing car, the Sunbeam 350HP, which featured a Sunbeam Manitou engine that had been designed to power Royal Naval Air Service flying boats. With an engine displacement of 1,118 cubic inches L and the ability to generate 355 horsepower 265 kilowatts at 2,100 revolutions per minute, the 350HP achieved a top speed of 134 miles per hour in 1922. In 1923, Ernest Eldridge began building the Mephistophele, which consisted of a Fiat SB4 chassis and a 21.7 liter in Fiat a .12 bis aircraft engine that produced 320 horsepower 240 kilowatts at 1,800 revolutions per minute. On 12 July 1924, Eldridge drove the car to a world record speed of 234.980 km per hour 146.010 miles per hour on public roads in Arpajon, France, which marked the last time that a land speed record would be set on public roads. The car's name was bestowed upon it by the press due to the tremendous amount of noise and smoke generated by its engine. Argentine racer Adolfo Scandrolio built his Fiat Batavogo special in the image of the Mephistophele, using a 1917 Fiat chassis and the same 21.7 litre 1320 cu in Fiat a .12 engine that had been chosen by Eldridge. The car, which was named after a famed racehorse, was capable of producing 320 horsepower 240 kilowatts at 1,800 revolutions per minute. In 1949, Scandrolio was killed while racing the Batavogo Special, and the car was presumed to have been lost before its engine was rediscovered in the 1990s. After its rediscovery, the Argentine company Per Sang, which is noted for creating exact replicas of Alfa Romeo 8C 2300s and Bugatti Type 35s, reconstructed the Batavogo Special. In 2011, the rebuilt car was purchased from Per Sang by Jay Leno. In 1923, the Sunbeam 350 HP was purchased by Malcolm Campbell, who made modifications to the coachwork as well as the engine in his endeavor to increase its speed. He also renamed the car Blue Bird, and on 25 September 1924 used it to set the official world land speed record with a speed of 146.16 miles per hour at Pendine Sands in Wales. The next year, on 21 July 1925, Campbell returned to Pendine, where he became the first person to exceed 150 miles per hour 240 kilometers per hour as he set a new record of 150.766 miles per hour 242.634 kilometers per hour. Perhaps the most well-known aero-engined cars of the interwar period were the series of amateur, chain-driven creations of Louis Z. Borowski that were each known as Chitty Bang Bang. They later attained fame as the namesake for the children's book Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, written by Ian Fleming, as well as the film and musical of the same title. Although the origin of the name is unknown, it is thought to derive from either a lewd World War I soldier's song or simply the sound of the aircraft engines that powered the cars. The first car, Chitty One, featured a customized pre-war Mercedes chassis and a 23-liter six-cylinder Maybach airplane engine that had powered a Gotha GV bomber before it was surrendered by Germany as a war reparation. The engine could produce 300 horsepower 220 kilowatts at a relatively modest 1,500 revolutions per minute. Chitty One achieved celebrity status at Brooklands in 1921, where it won races at speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour, 160 kilometers per hour. In 1922, Zed Borowski returned to Brooklands to achieve his highest ever speed in the car, 113.45 miles per hour, 182.58 kilometers per hour. Although that autumn Chitty One was destroyed in a racing accident, Zed Borowski began working on a second car of the same name, Chitty Two, in 1921. While its use of an older model Mercedes for its chassis made it similar to its predecessor, this iteration of Chitty Bang Bang was powered by an 18.8-liter Benz BZ, IV engine that manufactured 230 horsepower 170 kilowatts. Chitty 2 placed second in its only race at Brooklands, although it did record a speed of over 108 miles per hour 174 kilometers per hour. In 1922, Zed Borowski and his wife took the car on a lengthy excursion across France and Algeria, all the way to the edge of the Sahara, where a dearth of sufficient radiator water caused such substantial engine damage that he was forced to retire the car from racing. 
Zed Borowski himself was killed at Monza while competing in the 1924 Italian Grand Prix, and Chitty II passed through a series of owners including Arthur Conan Doyle before being acquired by the Crawford Auto Aviation Collection in Cleveland. The third of Zborowski's cars, Chitty III, was also built around a modified Mercedes chassis, this time mated to a six-cylinder Mercedes aircraft engine originally rated at 160 horsepower, 120 kilowatts, that had been tuned to develop 180 horsepower, 130 kilowatts. Once again, this car raced at Brooklands, where it achieved a top speed of 112.68 miles per hour, 181.34 kilometers per hour. Zborowski's fourth and final aero-engined car was the Hyam Special, which he named in a nod to his manor, the Hyam House. Created in 1924 for the purpose of making an attempt on the land speed record, the car was powered by a World War I V12 Liberty L12 engine with a displacement of 27 litres 1,648 cu in, which made it the largest capacity engine to ever race at Brooklands. With an engine producing 450 horsepower 340 kilowatts and the gearbox and chain drive of a pre-war Blitzen Benz, the Heim Special achieved a speed of 116 miles per hour 187 kilometers per hour with Zed Borowski at the wheel. After Zborowski's death at Monza, racing enthusiast J. G. Parry Thomas bought the car and, after streamlining the body and modifying the engine, rechristened it, Babs. In 1926, Parry Thomas took the car back to Brooklands, where he set a new world record with a speed of 129 miles per hour, 208 kilometers per hour. He then took Babs to Pendine, where he achieved 169 miles per hour, 272 kilometers per hour on the sands. After Malcolm Campbell took back the record with a 174 miles per hour, 280 kilometers per hour run in his Blue Bird, Parry Thomas returned to Pendine in 1927 with a more streamlined Babs. However, on his first run, he was killed in a crash. Parry Thomas's crew buried Babs in the sand, where it remained until Owen Win Owen began excavating it in 1969. Win Owen ultimately restored the car to working order by 1985. In 2013, Babs was placed on display at the National Waterfront Museum in Swansea. In 1927, Henry Seagrave broke Campbell's world speed record with a run of 202.98 miles per hour, 326.66 kilometers per hour at Daytona Beach, Florida, in his Sunbeam 1000 horsepower, which was powered by two V12 Sunbeam Matabele aircraft engines. The new record made him the first person to surpass the 200 miles per hour, 320 kilometers per hour mark. The following year, Campbell raced at Daytona to retake the record with a speed of 206.95 miles per hour, 333.05 kilometers per hour, only to have it eclipsed just 2 months later by Ray Keach and his Triplex Special, which was powered by 3 V12 Liberty engines. On the 11th of March 1929, Seagrave captured the world record once more at Daytona with a speed of 231.446 miles per hour, 372.476 kilometers per hour in his Golden Arrow, which was powered by a W12 Napier Lion aircraft engine with a displacement of 23,944 cubic centimeters, 1,461.2 cu in, that manufactured 925 bhp, 690 kilowatts at 3,300 revolutions per minute. The very next day, while attempting to retake the record with the triplex special, driver Lee Bible lost his life in a fatal crash that also killed a film cameraman. Topic. 1930s in 1931, Campbell returned to competition with an upgraded Blue Bird that was sleeker and lower than its predecessor. Fitted with a 1450 horsepower, 1080 kilowatts Napier Lion engine, the car successfully set a new land speed record with a run of 246.09 miles per hour, 396.04 kilometers per hour. By 1933, Campbell had created another Bluebird that was powered by a Rolls-Royce R, which had achieved fame as the engine that helped the Supermarine S6B seaplane win the Schneider Trophy. With this engine, which produced 2,500 horsepower, 1,900 kilowatts, and had a displacement of 36.7 liters, 2,240 cu in, Blue Bird achieved a speed in excess of 272 miles per hour, 438 kilometers per hour, at Daytona. However, as performance continued to increase, the relatively limited area of Daytona Beach began to prevent cars from reaching their true top speeds. 
In September 1935, Campbell took Bluebird to Utah's Bonneville Salt Flats, where it exceeded 300 miles per hour, 480 kilometers per hour. A flat Jenkins, who in October 1935 had set speed records for one hour and for 24 hours in a factory modified Duesenberg SJ on a 10 miles, 16 kilometers circuit marked out in the Bonneville Salt Flats, realized that it was no longer possible for a modified production car to compete against aero-engined cars for long-distance speed records. Jenkins had his SJ special further modified, replacing the modified SJ engine with a 25.73 liters cu in Curtis Conqueror engine. The Conqueror engine special was named Mormon Meteor by a contest held by the Deseret News. In 1936 the Mormon Meteor set the 500 km 310 miles record at 164.47 miles per hour 264.69 km per hour breaking a record set by George Aston the 24 hour record at 153.82 miles per hour 247.55 km per hour and the 48 hour record at 148.64 miles per hour 239.21 km per hour the Mormon Meteor set another 24-hour record in 1937, averaging 157.27 miles per hour, 253.10 kilometers per hour. Jenkins then commissioned August Duesenberg to build a chassis that was better able to handle the weight, power, and torque of the Conqueror engine. The result was the Mormon Meteor 3, which broke the 12-hour record in 1939 and set a 24-hour record of 161.18 miles per hour, 259.39 kilometers per hour in 1940. In 1937, Aston brought his Thunderbolt to Bonneville, where its twin Rolls-Royce R engines powered it to a world record speed of 312 miles per hour, 502 kilometers per hour. That year on the Salt Flats, something of a rivalry developed between Aston and John Cobb, who had previously raced the 23.94-litre Napier Railton at Brooklands as well as at Bonneville. For 1937, Cobb had built the teardrop-shaped, streamlined Railton Special, which featured four-wheel drive and two Napier Lion engines. Over the span of just a few weeks, Aston and his Thunderbolt set a new record of 345.49 miles per hour, 556.01 kilometers per hour, which Cobb and his Railton Special answered with a run of just over 350 miles per hour, 560 kilometers per hour, before Aston retook the title by achieving 357.5 miles per hour, 575.3 kilometers per hour. The following year, 1938, Cobb returned to Bonneville and set a new world record of 369.7 miles per hour, 595.0 kilometers per hour, which would stand until 1947 due in part to the hiatus of competition caused by the outbreak of World War II. By 1939, the Mercedes-Benz T80 emerged as the result of a 3-year collaboration between German auto racer Hans Stuck, Mercedes-Benz, and Adolf Hitler, the latter of whom had a strong interest in motorsport and was committed to subsidizing German racing endeavors in an effort to showcase his country's technological superiority on the world stage. Costing an astounding 600,000 Reichsmarks, the six-wheeled, streamlined T80 was largely designed and developed by Ferdinand Porsche. The T80 was powered by the Daimler-Benz DB603, an inverted V12 aviation engine that boasted a displacement of 44. 5 litre 2,716 cu in and was capable of producing 2,200 kilowatts 3,000 horsepower, which had been derived from the Daimler-Benz DB601 that powered the Messerschmitt Bf 109 fighter aircraft. The T-80's engine ran on a fuel mixture that consisted mostly of methyl alcohol 63%, as well as smaller percentages of benzene, ethanol, acetone, nitrobenzene, avgas, and ether. After initially being set at 550 km per hour, 340 miles per hour the car's targeted top speed was ultimately increased to 750 km per hour, 470 miles per hour by late 1939. A world speed record attempt was planned for January 1940 on the 10-kilometer Dessauer Rennstrecke segment of the Reichsautobahn Berlin Halle, Leipzig, with stuck at the controls, although the outbreak of World War II prevented the run from ever happening. After surviving the war in storage in Carinthia, Austria, the T-80 was ultimately acquired by the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Stuttgart. Post-World War II <laughs> Piston-engined cars 
After the conclusion of World War II, John Cobb returned to Utah in 1947, where he improved upon his own world record by achieving an official speed of 394.196 miles per hour, 634.397 kilometers per hour in his rebuilt Railton Mobile Special. On one of the requisite two-way runs, Cobb exceeded 400 miles per hour, 640 kilometers per hour. Cobb's record would stand for 16 years, and would mark the last time that a piston-engined car would hold the world land speed record. In 1951, hot rod and drag racing enthusiast Art Arvons began building a series of aero-engined racing cars each known as the Green Monster. The first was a two-ton Ford truck chassis mated to an Allison V1710 piston engine that was altogether capable of a record 144 miles per hour in a quarter-mile drag race. Arvons went on to build 12 more piston-engined green monsters before he began experimenting with jet engines. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Turbine-engined cars. First raced in 1960, the Bluebird Proteus CN7 was built at a cost of 1 million pounds and powered by a Bristol Siddeley Proteus turboshaft gas turbine engine. The engine, which was rated at 4,100 horsepower 3,100 kilowatts, drove all four wheels. After a serious crash at Bonneville, a tail fin was added to the original design before the Bluebird Proteus CN7 made another run at the world record at Lake Eyre, South Australia. There, on 17 July 1964, Donald Campbell piloted the car to a new world record speed of 403.10 miles per hour (648.73 kilometers per hour). A number of other turbine-engined racing cars have been built, including two designed to compete for the world land speed record: Pioneer 2M and the Renault Atoile Filanti. Turbine-engined cars have also raced in other types of motorsports, including both open-wheel racing Lotus 56 and STP Paxton Turbocar as well as sports car racing Helmet TX and Rover BRM. <laughs> <laughs> Jet-engined cars in 1962, jet engines made their first appearances at Bonneville in three different cars that were each based around the General Electric J47 engine, which also powered the North American F86 Sabre jet fighter. One of the cars was the Flying Caduceus, which was driven to a speed of 331 miles per hour, 533 kilometers per hour, by Nathan Ostich, a physician who built the first jet car. The second was piloted by Glenn Leisha, who approached the 400 miles per hour (640 kilometers per hour) mark before he was killed in a crash. The third was the needle-nosed Spirit of America, designed and raced by drag racer Craig Breedlove. Breedlove also contended for the speed record that year, although he did not capture the title until he recorded a speed of 407 miles per hour (655 kilometers per hour) in 1963. In 1964, brothers Art and Walt Arvons arrived at Bonneville with jet cars of their own. Walt had acquired a Westinghouse J46 jet engine, which had been designed for the Vought F7U Cutlass, that he used to power his Wingford Express. Art had opted for a General Electric J79, the same engine that powered the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter and the Convair B-58 Hustler bomber, and built a new, jet-powered Green Monster. After Walt Arvons crashed and suffered a heart attack while testing the Wingford Express, designer Tom Green was selected to drive the car. Despite never having driven over 130 miles per hour (210 kilometers per hour) before, on the 2nd of October 1964, he piloted the car to a world record speed of 413 miles per hour (665 kilometers per hour). The record stood for just three days, however, before it was broken by Art Arvons and his Green Monster with a speed of 434 miles per hour (698 kilometers per hour). Just one week after the Green Monster's record run, Breedlove broke the 500 miles per hour (800 kilometers per hour) barrier before surviving a high-speed crash. The 1964 season ended with Art Arvons retaking the speed title when he made a run at 536 miles per hour (863 kilometers per hour) after making modifications to his engine. In 1965, Breedlove returned to the Bonneville Salt Flats with his new Spirit of America, Sonic I, which was powered by a GEJ79 engine. Challenged by Walt Arvons and his modified, Jato assisted Wingford Express, Breedlove recorded a speed of 555 miles per hour in his new car. 
While Walt was unable to match Breedlove's speed, his brother Art surpassed it just a week later with a run of 576 miles per hour, 927 kilometers per hour, despite shredding a tire in the process. Ultimately, it was Breedlove, immortalized by the Beach Boys in the song "Spirit of America." Who emerged victorious as he posted a speed of 600.601 miles per hour, 966.574 kilometers per hour, on the 15th of November 1965. In 1970, Gary Gabelich piloted the rocket-powered Blue Flame to a new world record at Bonneville with a speed of 622.407 miles per hour, 1,001.667 kilometers per hour. In 1983, this record was eclipsed by Thrust 2, which was powered by a Rolls-Royce Avon jet engine and driven by Richard Noble to a speed of 633.468 miles per hour, 1019.468 kilometers per hour. In 1997, the world land speed record was bested once more by Thrust SSC, which achieved a speed of 763 miles per hour, 1228 kilometers per hour in the Black Rock Desert with Andy Green at the controls. The car, which was powered by two Rolls-Royce Spey jet engines that manufacture a combined 110,000 horsepower and 50,000 pounds of thrust, became the first vehicle to break the sound barrier on land. Jet-powered drag racing cars have also appeared in National Hot Rod Association NHRA events since the 1970s. Jet cars were first sanctioned by the NHRA in 1974, and in 1980 official approval was granted for jet-powered funny cars. In 1975, drag racer Philip Al Iadam created Emergency One, a jet car powered by a Westinghouse J34 engine and stylized to mimic a fire engine. In the 1980s, Iadam built and raced the rocket engine Invader, often against his friend Sammy Miller and his rocket-powered funny car, Vanishing Point. The two contested the first side-by-side -side drag races between rocket-powered cars at Santa Pod Raceway in England. By 1989, Roger Guston had built more jet cars than anyone else in drag racing and had won the Jet Car Nationals on five separate occasions. In the 2010s, jet cars have continued to be major attractions at NHRA events, participating in exhibitions such as four wide races and achieving speeds in excess of 270 miles per hour, 430 kilometers per hour. During the 2012 season, Elaine Larson and Marisha Falk both drove jet dragsters powered by General Electric J85 engines capable of producing 5,000 horsepower 3,700 kilowatts. Non-racing applications Although rare, aircraft engines have occasionally been chosen as the powerplant for road-going cars. One prime example is the Tucker 48, which was produced in 1947 and 1948 and powered by a flat 6 Franklin O335 helicopter engine. With a displacement of 5,473 cc, 334.0 cu in, the engine manufactured 166 bhp, 124 kilowatts at 3,200 revolutions per minute and produced a maximum of 372 pound-feet, 504 Nm of torque at 2,000 revolutions per minute. Yet, due largely to its all-alloy construction, only weighed 320 pounds, 150 kilograms. The engine enabled the Tucker 48 to reach a top speed of approximately 120 miles per hour, 190 kilometers per hour, and to accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers per hour in 10 seconds. While the original O335 helicopter engine was air-cooled, Tucker engineers modified it to water cooling, which helped improve the power plant's durability while also giving the car the automotive industry's first fully sealed water cooling system. In the 1960s, British engineer Paul Jamieson and transmission specialist John Dodd collaborated to build the Beast, a road car fitted with a 27-litre cu in Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. Using a General Motors turbo hydromatic gearbox, the back axle from a Jaguar XJ12, doors cast from a Ford Cortina MK3, and a fiberglass body reminiscent of a Ford Capri, the finished car had a phallically long front end that measured 10 feet. The Beast's engine produced approximately 950 bhp 710 kilowatts at 2,500 revolutions per minute which propelled it to a top speed in excess of 180 miles per hour 290 kilometers per hour. The car averages less than 2 miles per imperial gallon, 1.4 L per kilometer. Once listed by the Guinness Book of Records as the world's most powerful road car, by 2012 the Beast had been located in Malaga. 
Turbine engines have also been utilized in concept and prototype road cars, such as the three General Motors Firebirds, the Fiat Turbiner, and the Chrysler Turbine car. In 1953, the General Motors XP21 Firebird I became the first car powered by a gas turbine engine to be built in the United States. Never intended for production, the car was purely a design exercise to determine the feasibility of turbine-powered road cars. The car's body, which was made of plastic reinforced by fiberglass, was designed by Harley J. Earl, while its Whirlfire turbo power engine was developed by Charles L. McEwen and the GM Research Laboratories Division. Driving the rear wheels of the car via a conventional transmission, the engine was able to produce 370 horsepower (280 kilowatts) at 13,000 revolutions per minute. Its successor, Firebird II, debuted at General Motors Motorama in 1956. In addition to its regenerative gas turbine, the car featured a titanium body, fully independent suspension, power disc brakes, electric gear selection, and air conditioning that could be individually controlled. The last of GM's Firebirds, Firebird III, was built in 1958. It was the only Firebird to influence any GM production cars, both the 1959 and 1961 Cadillac lineups took styling cues from it. Noted for its extravagant tailfinds, Firebird 3 also broke a number of Earl styling rules with its very reserved use of chrome and lack of parallel lines. While GM planned a Firebird IV, it never came to fruition, although the three Firebirds did ultimately become the namesake of the Pontiac Firebird pony cars that debuted in 1967. In 1954, Fiat introduced its own experimental turbine engine prototype, the Turbiner. The car was powered by a two-stage turbine that powered the wheels through a geared reduction unit, while its body was streamlined based on the results of wind tunnel testing. The turbiner's engine enabled it to achieve a top speed of 250 km per hour, 160 miles per hour as well as to produce 300 horsepower 220 kilowatts at 22,000 revolutions per minute. Introduced to the public in 1963, the Chrysler turbine car was powered by a turbine that produced 130 horsepower, 97 kilowatts, and 425 pound-feet, 576 Nm of torque, which made its output roughly equivalent to a 318 cubic inch, 5.21 L V8 engine. The turbine engine offered numerous advantages in a road car, including less need for maintenance due to fewer moving parts, general operating smoothness, greater dependability of starting in cold weather, lack of a need for antifreeze, minimal oil consumption, and the ability to run on almost any combustible liquid. The car is claimed to have run on fuels as diverse as peanut oil, Chanel No. 5 perfume, and tequila. However, there were also significant drawbacks with using a turbine engine in the car, namely high internal heat, lack of inherent engine braking, and high emissions of nitrogen oxides NOx. Furthermore, the engine was better suited to the relatively continuous operation and constant speeds of aviation use than it was to the more disruptive, stop-and-go conditions of automotive use. On the highway, the car could achieve 19 miles per U.S. gallon 0.12 L per kilometer, but because the engine idled at 22,000 revolutions per minute it was less efficient in city driving. In addition to being less fuel efficient than a comparable V8-engined car, the turbine car was also substantially more expensive. Jay Leno estimates that the car would have cost around $16,000 if it was ever sold to the public, compared to about $5,000 for a piston-engined car of comparable performance. Topic revival Even after the period in which they were competitive in the quest for the world land speed record, there has been continued and renewed interest in piston-driven aero-engined cars. One of the earliest cars created during this revival era is the Napier Bentley, which was built by Peter Morley and David Llewellyn in 1972 in the spirit of the aero-engined cars that raced at Brooklands. The Napier Bentley consists of a 1929 Bentley chassis and a 23.9-litre cu in Napier Sea Lion aircraft engine, which produces 580 bhp (430 kilowatts) and 1,250 pound-feet (1,690 Nm) of torque. The car has been raced regularly and was once involved in a crash that hospitalized Morley for a few weeks. In 1998, the Napier Bentley was sold to Chris Williams. Williams has also designed and built the Packard Bentley, which he envisioned as a tribute to the interwar aero-engined racing cars that competed at Brooklands. Built over a period of seven years, the car, which is nicknamed Mavis, made its debut at the 2010 Chumley Pageant of Power. The Packard Bentley is made up of a Bentley 8-liter chassis and a 40.8-liter V12 Packard engine taken from an American World War II torpedo boat. 
The engine gives the car 1,500 bhp at 2,400 revolutions per minute, while allowing it to achieve a top speed of approximately 160 miles per hour (260 kilometers per hour) and a fuel efficiency of 4 imperial gallons (18 l) per minute. The Packard Bentley is valued at around £350,000. Aero-engined cars also made an appearance on the British television programme Top Gear on 4 March 2012, during the sixth episode of season 18, when both the BMW-engined Brutus and Rolls-Royce-engined Meteor were featured. The Brutus was built in Germany shortly after World War II, when a 1908 American La France car was fitted with a 46.9-litre V12 BMW aircraft engine that dates to 1925. The car was created over several years at a workshop at the Auto and Technik Museum in Sinsheim, Germany, which still owns it. According to the museum, the Brutus can produce 500 horsepower, 370 kilowatts at 1500 revolutions per minute, while its fuel efficiency averages 1 L per kilometer, 2.8 mpg imp. After driving the car on Top Gear, presenter Jeremy Clarkson described the experience as akin to doing a crossword while being eaten by a tiger. The Meteor that appeared during the same episode has the chassis from a 1930s Rolls-Royce Phantom and a World War II vintage, 27-liter Rolls-Royce Meteor engine. The engine produces 850 bhp 630 kilowatts, which allows the car to achieve a top speed of 160 miles per hour 260 kilometers per hour and a fuel efficiency of roughly 2 mpg imp 1.4 l per kilometer. In 2013, the Meteor went on sale for a price in excess of £500,000. See also Aircraft engine Vehicles powered by Napier Lion engines Blastoline Special custom-built car powered by a Continental AV-17905B tank engine